Sasi Prasad, a technical architect with expertise in Salesforce Marketing Cloud. Today, I want to talk to you about some exciting developments in the world of Marketing Cloud. We'll discuss how you can create a custom app where the marketers can go to a custom app under the app exchange, select the checkbox they want to leverage and with the tracking information for the campaign sense. I would request you to come to my blog that is b2sasi.blogspot.com and read this blog introducing WS proxy rate method in SMMC. So first let me go to Salesforce Marketing Cloud instance so you do demo and then we'll discuss the technical solutioning so this is my marketing cloud instance let me go to the app exchange under the app exchange you can see there is a data views click on that link and this particular ui will be open for you if i just simply click on this submit button it will prompt you a message saying that you at least need to check one checkbox so first let me just select one checkbox that is the select one and click on submit i get back a status saying it's okay and also i get the request id it means a data extension for send data view has been created and let's navigate to the data extension so i go to the audience builder and click on contact builder for the contact builder i would click on data extension let me just expand the data extension root folder. I got a new soft folder called data views and inside the data views a data extension called data view send has been created. Let me go back to the custom app and now again select send and click on submit. So you'll see it is showing an error because we have already created this data extension right so let me delete this data extension let me go back to the custom map now i'm going to select all the check boxes and click on submit So I get a response, status is OK, and I get the request ID. Let us go back to the data extension, refresh this. Now you can see all the four data extensions has been created. So now let us move to the implementation. Let us go to the Web Studio and click on Cloud Pages. Here you can click on create collections and give a name and a collection would be created. I have already created a collection called custom app. Inside the custom app, you can click on add content, click on landing page, give a name and click on next and save. It will create a landing page. And if I click on the link, it will basically show you the same custom app that we were using previously. Fine. So I'm using cloud page as my custom app. Let us go to the code. So for the custom app, this is my code. Okay. Uh, you have both script SHS 
and also HTML. I have dissected this code into three different parts. One is the M script part, second one is the HSS part, and third is the form tag. So first start with the form tag. So I created a form tag with the action which redirects back to the same plot page. And the method is post. Inside this form, I have created four different input fields. Okay. And these four different input fields have a unique ID, unique name, and the unique value. The name here for the send data view, I have stored it as send data view. The value is also send data view. Similarly, for the open data view, I have used the name as open data view and the value is open data view. If you haven't watched my previous video, I would request you to go back to my previous video and understand the importance of name value attributes for an input inside the form tag and what happens when you basically submit the page especially when it comes to the type checkbox so i'm not going to spend much time explaining the input tags the name value attributes let me move to the m script part so in the m script part whenever there is a post method basically when somebody clicks on the submit button I'm basically storing the values that are posted into a script variable using request parameter function so basically in this session we are trying to learn create item and create batch method for WS proxy here I'm using create item to create a folder and create batch to create a data extension. We'll go to those functions later. First understand what we are trying to achieve here. The line number three here, I'm basically storing the method, whether the page is a post or a get. If the method is post, then I'm fetching the M script variables using get value function and storing into the JavaScript variable. In line number 12, I'm trying to basically retrieve the sub folder that is the data view, whether it exists already or whether it does not exist. If it does not already exist, I'm going to retrieve the folder ID for the root folder that is data extensions. And then I'm going to create a subfolder called data views. And in line number 16, I'm basically storing the new ID. When I create a new folder, it returns me the new ID attribute which I'm storing. And these are the basically the request parameter variables that I was storing in an M script variable. So I'm validating here whether somebody has checked the checkbox or not. If the checkbox was checked, then what I'm doing is calling a function create send data view if send data view was checked. Similarly, if open data view was selected, check then I'm calling a function create open data view and the same for click data view and the pause data view and also if you notice I am basically pushing that particular variable that is the same data view into an array that is data views okay so you might be wondering what this create send data view does so if i just go to 
create send data view function. Have you been Here is my create send data view function. It is passing the category ID, basically the folder ID. Here we are basically storing the data extension under the data view subfolder. So that particular data view folder ID have captured it as a new ID and passing to this function. And the category ID is assigned to that particular new ID. So I have the customer key, which I'm saying data view underscore sent and the name I'm keeping the same data view underscore sent. And I'm passing all the fields that are required for the data extensions. And once this configuration is defined, I'm returning back that particular object. Similarly, I have done for open, click, and bounce. I am basically capturing the configuration and pushing it into the array that is data views. And once this is done, all these conditions are checked. I'm calling a function called create data views. Here in this create data views, I'm passing an array called data views, which will store the same data view, open, click, and bounce based on the user preference. In line 306, I'm basically creating an object of WS proxy, utilizing script.util.ws proxy library. And then I'm calling the function create batch. This create batch method would take the first parameter as the soap object. And here we are using data extension as the soap object. The second parameter here is basically the array which contains the configuration for those soap object also takes a third parameter but here for this use case we don't require to pass the third parameter so this 307 invokes this create batch method creates the data extension and send us the response so I basically catch the response. I'm just binding the status and the request ID and creating a output variable to display it to the user. One point to note, like when you do the create folder here, like create a folder function, if I go to the create a folder function, In this function, I'm using create item method. Have you been and naughty? as a parameter, I'm passing the name, customer key, description, and the parent folder ID. So I'm passing these attributes, name, customer key, description, content type is data extension, and all the parameters here, and the parent folder, as a id as the parent folder id this is little different from what we did when we implemented sss sss has a different properties and how you need to pass here it is not the same there's little difference so you have to understand this uh, parent child relationship and the parent child attribute as well so I would ask everyone to basically come to my blog, read my blog, and if you have any questions, if you have any queries, you can ask me, you can write to me in my YouTube channel or in LinkedIn. I'll try to answer all your queries or clarifications that you want. You can also go down, obviously it's a very long blog, and if you scroll down, I have tried to show you what is the data flow, how basically the custom app would function. I have given you the form, how you need to design the form and also the code, 
uh, with SSS, especially when it comes to WS proxy. If you need any some other references for creating a custom app, I would definitely ask you to go and read my previous blogs, listen to my previous videos, you'll find all the answers. I hope you enjoyed this session. If you enjoyed this session, give a thumbs up, give a feedback. Thank you all. We'll meet in some another sessions. Bye.